Uh, yeah, from a work standpoint, do you have any tips or advice for students or cybersecurity career aspirants who want to work in the realm of data privacy? Are there some experiences in this day and age or self-initiated projects that they should be engaging in now to make themselves more desirable to potential employees, employers? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that attracted me to um, the space was really the fact that cybersecurity is a fast-moving sector. Mm -hmm. uh, our successful hires have experience in building security, privacy, machine learning, and cloud technology platforms. I would say being familiar with the latest trends in technologies, um, you know, the areas of the business for both personal and professional development would be a great starting point, um, especially to be more desirable to potential employers. Um, as an example, we recently replatformed our entire software on Rust. Mm. Uh, and so, you know, that's a that's a great sort of technology that's high in demand for, for new developers. Yep. So learning Rust would be a, a great sort of angle there. Mm. Uh, our team also has a lot of open source experience. So if you're new to the game, contributing to projects as part of an open source community is a great way to get involved. Okay, so I'm, I'm guessing you probably, uh, you know, do some hiring personally yourself. Like, what are some things you like to see on a resume or or sort of how do you like to sort of find out about, you know, potential people who could work for for Kate Privacy? What are, what are the things you have to see on a resume or what are the things that indicate that this person has the sort of passion or interest or, you know, can learn the tech as long as they have the interest or, or excitement about it? I think that's the key, right? It's the passion and the interest to learn, to show that yep. they have the aptitude to adapt and change, especially for an early stage company like ours, mm -hmm. um, you know, to be able to pivot and to be able to, you know, turn on a dime. Um, so, you know, certainly in terms of what I look for on resumes, it's going to be, um, you know, obviously if they're, they're undergraduate, that they've shown achievements during school. As I said, if they've mm -hmm. contributed to open source projects, if they've, you know, self-taught themselves, things like Rust or Go, Python, um, you yep. know, these sorts of things, taking the self-initiative, would certainly be a, an indicator of a good hire. How about how about with with regards to sort of moving up the ladder? Like once you're in once you're in the door, like what are what are things that a data privacy person, uh, you know, does to kind of level themselves up and 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 take on more responsibility and and sort of higher titles and so forth? What what are what are some things that you recommend in that regard? So I think you know again our space is fairly new, but mm -hmm. having experience obviously with cloud technologies, machine learning, artificial intelligence. Um, the privacy segment is obviously something that's developing rapidly. Mm -hmm. um, so again, if you're sort of middle management, moving up, et cetera, mm. you know, someone that's had years of experience with cloud infrastructure, with machine learning technologies, yep. um, artificial intelligence, I would say those are obviously some of the key things that we look for as well. I'm excited to announce that our InfoSec Skills platform will be releasing a new challenge every month with three hands-on labs to put your cyber skills to the test. Each month, you'll build new skills ranging from secure coding to penetration testing to advanced persistent threats and everything in between. Plus, we're giving away more than $1,000 worth of prizes each month. Go to infosecinstitute.com challenge and start your challenge right now.